welcome back to Advent Cry. We are going to be looking at the topic of the first great deception. And we all know where this took place. It was in the Garden of Eden. Um, before we go any further, I would like to ask you guys to share this video. Give it a like. And if you are enthused to do such or impressed to do such, we ask for your support by praying for this ministry and also by donating to continue the cause of this work. You can donate by visiting adventcry.org. So before we dive into this Bible studies, Bible study, we would like to first begin by breathing a word of prayer. We have to pray before we begin this Bible study. And so we want to do such. Let us pray. Eternal love in God. We give you thanks for your guidance and your protections. Thank you for your love. And thank you, Father, for being with us. We ask that you may come divinely near unto us even now. We ask that you may enlighten us and teach us what is truth, even as we go through this Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the first great deception. So it all began in the earliest history of mankind. Satan came to earth and began to deceive and destroy our race. So who is it that really began to deceive and to destroy our race? It is Satan. And we don't want to miss that. Okay? So the destroyer of the human race is Satan. So that needs to be rebutted in our minds from this point onward. That Satan is the destroyer of the human race. Now let us continue. But how did he do it? That is the question. How did Satan begin to destroy and deceive the human race? Let us turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. It says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Hmm. Now, we are going to also go to read 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. Okay? So that is 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. And it reads, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So who did the Bible? So who did the Bible say he did it? The Bible says he did it through deception. He had done it through deception by first doing what? Corrupting the mind from the simplicity of Christ. So when the devil when he wants to deceive us, when he wants to destroy us, he first has to deceive our minds. And, and, and to deceive us, he, he, he causes us to do what? He causes our minds to become corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. You see, you see that? So he, the first thing he tries to do when he comes to deceive us is to disconnect us from God. So once we are disconnected from God, then he can do his 
corruption, his dirty works. Then he can perform, then he can accomplish in us the things that he will us to do. So, in order for us to resist the, this deception or this deceiver, we have to stay connected to Christ. And, and, and we saw what happened with our first parents in the Garden of Eden. The devil had corrupted Eve's mind, Eve's mind, and so she was then deceived. She was disconnected from God. You see, Satan had revealed himself in his real character. I mean, had Satan revealed himself in his true character, or real character, he would have been repulsed at once. Adam and Eve would have driven him away because God warned them against this dangerous foe in, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17. What, 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 what does it say? It says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Why? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So because of the warning God gave to Adam and Eve, Satan hid his true purpose and took possession of the serpent, which was so beautiful. The serpent was a beautiful creature back then. <laughs> May God have mercy. Now, what is this telling us about outward beauty? What is this really telling us about outward beauty? Well, the answer is that outward beauty can also be a deception and a corrupting of the mind. Because Satan loves to use beautiful things as his medium to deceive and to destroy. So let us be careful lest he also deceive you and I. And in fact, I, I want to read you a few Bible verses regarding, regarding um, outward beauty. And I, I want to take you to, to Proverbs. I want to first take you to Proverbs. That is um, Proverbs chapter uh, 31. Proverbs chapter 31. As we're going to see that we must not so much focus on the outward beauty or we must not give favor as in a preference of beauty because that can lead to our, our demise. It says, favor is deceitful. What does it say? Favor is deceitful. And, and, and what does it mean? When we show favor, when we show preference, because you love a person because of, you know, you love that person because that person is more beautiful than the other. Or you love that person because that person is more handsome than the other. No, if you do that, the Bible says it is deceitful. Also, it says, and beauty is vain. You, you hear this? So, favor is deceitful and what? And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Wow. Just wow. Now, let us um, go ahead and read a few more Bible verses. And um, this is taken from... John chapter 7 and verse 24. And it says, Judge not according to the appearance. You see that? So we must not judge according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. No, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12 said, For we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that he may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. So you hear what it says? 
we basically say that we must not glory in appearance, but we must glory in heart. Now, chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians and verse 7, it says, Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again. You hear what it says? If we think that we are after Christ and we are judging things or we are looking at the outward beauty, let us rethink this. That as is Christ, even so are we Christ. So we must not do that. And this is one of the reasons deception is, is filling the world. Because we are showing favor and we are judging things after the appearance. The devil sees this. He knows all these things and he is using them against us. So let us be careful. Now, shortly after Satan took possession of the serpent, <laughs> he began to question Eve. Now, notice how the Bible puts it. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now look at how Eve answered or look at how Eve had responded to the devil in, in verse 2, verse 2 to 3 of Genesis chapter 3. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. No, this is very important. You know what it says? Eve should not eat of it. In fact, it says Eve should never have touched it. You see that? So, not only to eat, but not even to touch it. Oh my gosh. You know, those are some, those are some straight commands that were given to God. That were given, not to God, but from God to Adam and Eve. No, notice again how the devil responded. <laughs> you see, no, no, you see what happening? You see what happening here? No, notice how he responded. We're now at verse 4 to 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. You see that word not there? God said, You shall surely die. And the serpent just added the word not. Surely die. Not alone was added. One single word changed the whole thing. For God don't know that in the day he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and he shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. Mm -mm. What did the woman do after she spoke with the deceiver? What did she do after she spoke with the deceiver? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, oh my God, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm, she took off the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see what just happened? Do you see what just happened? Satan told Eve that she would become like God. You see, you know, why, why is it that, you know, mankind cannot just listen to the simple command of God? Why is it that we want to take advice from someone else when the most high God has already given us clear and precise instruction. Now let me continue. Now, so Satan told Eve that she would become like God, making her believe that she would live forever and possessing greater wisdom. <laughs> but God said, 
the day listen to what God says because God says the words that goes from my mouth they shall not return unto me void they shall go forth and they shall accomplish what they must accomplish but God said the day you eat of it you shall surely die total opposite of what the devil had told Eve hmm? total opposite of what the devil had told Eve you see Eve should not Eve should not have had a conversation with this evil temper had she stayed away from the devil her mind you see you see the thing coming back right here her mind would not have been corrupted and she would not have been deceived this is exactly how many of us today are still being overcome this is exactly exactly so we doubt and we argue concerning the requirements of god and instead of obeying the divine command we accept human theories this is exactly what is happening today people are accepting human voice over the thus saith the lord what a world are we living in today people seem to, to, to be living a careless life eh? so so we don't and we argue concerning the requirements of god and instead of obeying the divine command we accept human theories which promise us a greater outcome but they are filled with lies and deceptive devices of satan that will make our lives more miserable and disappointed because eventually that is what we see happen to eve my friend eve yielded to the temptation and deception of satan and through her influence adam was led into sin mercy may god help us may god help us and and today and today this is one of the things that are happening in our society even as i speak to us today women need to humble themselves do not crave the position of your husband and do not crave the position of the man if you are in a position that god put you in then stay in that position that god placed you in and don't leave out of it because it is god who have put you there don't let the devil come and trick you and try to tell you that you must go higher because sometimes when you try to go higher you are just tearing down everything that god had put in place and god is going to hold people accountable god is going to hold people accountable we cannot escape there is no way to escape now what happened after adam took part in the sinning genesis chapter 3 and verse 7 and the eyes of them both were open so you see the devil did tell them that their eyes would be open and their eyes were both open let us continue and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons God. Mm. no you see what happened it says their eyes were open but what were their eyes open to their eyes were open to their own nakedness mm? they were no left without a shelter the devil had tricked them they have been fooled oh my god what a terrible situation hmm? what a terrible situation 
And because of their stupidity, they know sue to themselves fig leaves, trying to cover up themselves. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13, that he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Shall have mercy. Now, you see, whenever we sin, we must not cover our sins. Because when we begin to cover our sins, when we begin to try to hide the sins from God, no prosperity will be in our lives. No, it cannot be. The Bible says it. God says it. That we shall not prosper. Any one of us who cover, who covers our sin, we shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. God shall have mercy on those of us who confess our faults before God, confess our sins. And when we confess them, we never say that we must only confess them, but we must also forsake them. You know, when you forsake something, you know what you do? You leave it alone. You don't go back to it. We must forsake these things and move on from all these things. God wants the best for us. No. When we read on to in Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 12, it says, from verse 12 to 14, it says, And the man said, <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at what is going to start happening. Look at what is going to start happening. Look at what is going to start happening. And the man said, The woman... <laughs> Whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Verse 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You see what began to happen? A blame game. So people, people commit, people have committed their sins, and after they have committed their sins, and they began to be investigated. By the authority. This, this blame game. Begun to be played. Eh? My gosh. Adam started to, to tell God. That it is a woman. Whom he had given to him. Oh so he began to blame God. And he began to blame the woman. And then the woman blamed the serpent. Oh my gosh. We need to stop it. This blame game that we are going on with whenever we commit our sin, it takes us right back to the beginning of the first great deception. And whenever we do this blame game, we are repeating the first great deception. We need to stop it. We need to let go of these things. We need to let the Holy Spirit reign within us. We need to stop covering up our sins. We need to confess them that God may have mercy on us. Now, what happened after the blaming stop? Let us pick up in chapter, in, in verse 19 of Genesis chapter 3. It says, In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground mm? for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return so you see what happened oh my gosh 
the death sentence was pronounced. What was it? You shall return unto the dust. Hmm? So the devil, you see what the devil did? Oh, the devil had tricked the people, telling them that they would not have died. But here we are seeing the death, the death sentence pronounced upon Adam and Eve. And where are they today? They have died. They have been dead for thousands of years now. For thousands of years now. Which shows God's words to be true. And the devil's to be a liar. What more evidence do we want? What more proofs do we want? It is sufficient. God has given us sufficient evidence for us to fully trust in him. Now listen to what the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. It says, The soul that sinned, it shall die. You hear what it just said? Let me repeat this. Let me put a bit of emphasis on this. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. It says, the soul that sinned, it shall die. Now let us continue further down in the same verse. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him you see what's going on here so wife you must not blame your husband husband you must not blame your wife children you must not blame your mother or your father for the sins you have committed if you are the one who have committed the sin, you shall surely die. You better repent. You better repent before it is eternally too late. Being in sin may be a burden to you. And, you know, just like how you know, the moment when Adam and Eve had sinned. They should have been blotted from existence immediately. But I'm so happy. Though the great deceiver had deceived our human race and have caused so many death to reign for so many years upon the face of this earth, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ had stepped in. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ stepped in. And when Adam and Eve saw what they had done, they sorrowfully repented of their crime. And God wants to do the same thing for you and I today. He wants to do the same thing for you. So wherever you are, wherever you may be, whatever you may have been going through, the circumstances, the situation, let me read this to you in closing. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 to 30. Jesus Christ said, Come unto me. You hear what he said? He's calling you. He said, Come unto me. All ye, all of you, that are labor and are heavy laden. Are you labor and heavy laden, my friend? Are you tired? Are, are, are you weary? Hmm? And I will give you rest. That's what he says. He is calling you. He is calling us. He wants to give you rest. 
Okay? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So right there and then, Jesus is letting you know that, listen, he has a yoke as well. But he says, take my yoke upon you and do what? And learn of me. Now listen to what he's going to say for me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. So Jesus is calling us to be meek and lowly in heart. And that is the reason he just said, learn of me. So we need to learn of the meekness and the lowliness of Christ. We need to be meek and lowly in heart. Now listen to what he says again. And he shall find rest unto your souls. So when you learn of Christ, so when you become meek and lowly, you shall find rest unto your souls. We shall find rest unto our souls. And listen to the, the ending of it. It says, for my yoke is easy. You hear what it says? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hmm? For my yoke is easy and my burden is is light the gospel is not without a burden and it is not without a yoke but jesus christ had told us that his burden is easy that his yoke is easy and his burden is light now if jesus burden is 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 is, is light and his yoke is easy then the devils must be the opposite then the devils must be the opposite. And on this note, my friend, I will close with a word of prayer. Eternal loving Father, again we come before your holy presence. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Lord, when our first parents were deceived in the garden of Eden by the great deceiver. We, they should have been obliterated. They should have been wiped from existence immediately. But thank God for Jesus. The Lamb of God slain, slain from the foundation of this world had a plan for, man, for mankind. To restore us and to reconnect us to heaven. And so, Lord, you have called us that we must come unto you. Help us that we may come unto you wherever we are. Whatever may be our situation, our circumstances, our trials. Help us to come to you because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Thank you again in Jesus' name.